Hey guys, Atlas Shrug 383 here. I'm headed out to the gun range today to do a little shooting. Uh, one of the most common bits of feedback I get on my YouTube channel when I'm showing off my black powder firearms is, man, we'd like to see you shoot more. So hopefully today, if it all turns out, we'll get some shooting. Uh, today I brought with me my Pieta uh, 1860 Colt Army replica in 44 caliber. So uh, my plans are to shoot that some. Uh, I'm gonna use some uh, 30 grain Pyrodex pellets and also gonna freeload some, some powder as well and try a few different loads. I'll be sure to mention that later on, uh, what my loads were, distances and so forth. And I also brought a, a, whenever I go to the range, I almost always take a 22, just in case I just need to get my fix and shoot a lot for cheap, I bring a 22. And uh, my 22 today is a uh, Smith & Wesson M&P 22AR. Um, it's a fun gun to shoot. Operates just like a real, real AR. So plan on, on blasting some 22 ammo with that today as well. So hang in there, guys, and we'll, uh, we'll definitely make some smoke today. We're getting ready to load up. Our target today is going to be that right there. That is a uh, about 30 feet. That's my wooden target stand, and I've got a little uh, circle target on it. This is the Pieta 1860 Army. Beautiful gun, beautiful gun. Always love the barrel assembly on these. Uh, I love that rounded barrel. And the color case hardening looks great. And I like the brass furniture on the trigger frame and the front of the grip. To start with, we're going to use some of these uh, pistol pellets, uh, Pyrodex pistol pellets uh, for 44 caliber. They're roughly 30 grains. We're going to use this Hornady round balls, uh, 451 lead round balls. Our loading process is just going to be to drop one Pyrodex pellet into each cylinder. I'm going to follow up with a Wonder Wad, lubricated. And then I didn't bring my bench uh, press uh, to ram the balls, so I'll have to put the cylinder back on the pistol to put the balls on. We are capped and loaded. In between shots, you have to be aware of the cap debris. Uh, the caps will split, fragment, and they'll stick on to these percussion cones. Um, they'll drop into the action if you're not careful and jam you up. If you look on this one, the top one there has some debris on it now. When I take my next shot, I'm just gonna kind of feather that off with my finger. We go that's six rounds let's load up i see five holes there i do not know where that sixth round went maybe it's one of these on the bottom i'm already getting some fouling pretty badly actually so i'm going to use a little ballistol spray some of these parts down
You don't want to get it on this. But we definitely want to. There we go. That one's pretty crooked. Those little rings of lead are good. It means you've got a tight seal and you shouldn't get chain fires as long as you've got a good tight seal on the bullet and a good fitting cap. This pistol uses number 11 CCIs. These fit perfectly on this pistol. Snugly, they're easy to get on. You don't have to pinch them at all. Guys, for this third cylinder, I am going to lube the mouth of the cylinder, and here's why. The lube doesn't necessarily prevent chain fires, but this lube, which this is uh, tallow and beeswax, when the gun fires, this lube is going to help keep things soft and fluid, and uh, I can tell uh, just on the second time breaking this down, it was difficult because the fouling is uh, really starting to cake up in there and harden. And it's just difficult, but the lube should help with that. So we'll see. Messy, messy, messy. And now it's time to uh, hit it with my Smith & Wesson M&P 1522. Uh, this is 22 long rifle. Um, I'll talk a little more about the pistol when I get home because I have a hunch that it had a failure, but I've got to take the pistol apart to be sure. So for now, we're just going to do some plinking, I guess you'd say, <laughs> plinking on a wood target. Failed to fire. Firing pin hit, but didn't go off.
a second hit on that same bullet and it still didn't fire. Must be a dud. It's got two solid hits on it. Things fine. I love this gun. Now for our hits with the uh, M&P 1522, you'll see it generally at really close range like this, it will shoot a bit low. It has a tall uh, front sight. So that's common for close range like this. I also shot the license plate with it. Of course, it's a tight group. I mean, guys, I'm really close. I'm about 30 to 35 feet away, but it does pretty well. Also went for some headshots here. That's my 1522 right there. That's my spread. Uh, and some of that was rapid fire, so they weren't carefully aimed shots. So guys, on the way out, uh, leaving the range now, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what happened because I didn't say much while the camera was rolling. But I shot three cylinders uh, through that Pieta 1860 Army, okay? Uh, the first two cylinders, I used Pyrodex pellets, Wonder Wads, and the round balls that I showed you. Um, I noticed that the fouling was causing some binding issues already, just uh, especially on the second cylinder. It was tough for me to pull the barrel assembly off uh, because of that fouling. So I was spraying down with a little ballistol and things like that to try to keep things running. So on the third cylinder, I decided I'm gonna use some of my lube over the mouth of the cylinder to help that fouling stay soft and not become so, uh, not set up so tight, it's like mortar almost. I mean, it, it, it really gets hard quick. So I did that and uh, seemed to help a little bit, but on that third cylinder, I ran into some issues. The cylinder would not turn when I was pulling the hammer, it was binding. So I had to take it off two or three times to check, try to figure out what was going on. I had an issue with that same pistol when it was brand new. And the issue at that time, what the first time I had it out, I wasn't even shooting live ammo. I was doing a reenactment with this pistol and it was doing the same thing. On the hammer, the cam that presses on the bolt, uh, the bolt assembly, the cylinder bolt that pops up and locks the cylinder in place, the cam on the hammer sheared off, the, the very tip of it sheared off. So it was no longer lifting that assembly so the bolt would drop on half cock. I have no idea what, I've never had another pistol do that before. This is the first one. I thought, man, what a fluke. So I had to order a new hammer. I couldn't fix that one. So I ordered a new Pieta hammer and put in this pistol. And I've shot it one other time and it, everything was fine. Problem solved, right? Well, now I'm thinking the same thing has happened with this new hammer. And if that's the case, I won't buy any more. In fact, I'm done with Pieta. I have Uberti pistols. Uh, I have an 1860 uh, Uberti, or I'm sorry, an 1861 Uberti copy of the Colt Navy that I've had for eight years and shot countless times. And I've never had this issue. Never had this issue. The, the cam on the hammer, the half cock, flawless, flawless function. So we'll see. Once I get into that pistol, I will follow up with a, a final segment there and we'll see if that's happened again. And you guys, if it did, you, you'll wanna consider that. If you like cap and ball stuff, people say that Uberti and Pieta, not much different. Yeah, Uberti's a little more expensive, you know. But this is a quality control problem. They are not properly hardening their hammers or something, something's off. And uh, I'm not gonna keep buying hammers, so. Uh, Take care, guys, and uh, we'll follow up with a final to see what our issue was. And here's my follow-up video. I've made it home. I've taken this Pieta 1860 Army down to the to the roots, 
uh, to figure out why it wouldn't go into half cock and why I was getting so much resistance when pulling the hammer back. And check this out. I bought this hammer brand new and put in this for the same issue. This little cam right here pivots and this is what puts your pistol on half cock. And look at the end of it right there. It is chewed right off. And guys, even if you mishandle your pistols, even if you're hard on them, this shouldn't happen. I fired 18 rounds today and actually was having problems before I finished the third cylinder. The problem started during the second. And this has already sheared off right here. I'm not going to buy another one, but I'll tell you, this pistol isn't safe to shoot live fire anymore. If it will not go into half cock, if you can't rotate the cylinder without pulling the hammer all the way back and putting it down each time, it's a safety issue. So either this pistol is going to be a wall hanger, or I might still try to use it in some reenactments where I'm shooting blanks, but even then, you need to be able to put them in half cock. This really disappoints me. Can you see that? You can see the fresh metal right there where it's skint off. I can't, I keep thinking, what did I do wrong? All I did was use it exactly the way you were supposed to use it. I wasn't hard on it. That when the fouling started getting pretty thick and giving me resistance, I, I quit using it. I took it apart, lubed it. But right there, this is my second hammer that's done the same thing. And when I first got this Pieta, I ordered it from an online retailer. Uh, one of the percussion cones was missing from the cylinder. And I thought that was pretty lousy. Uh, granted, I put my own percussion nipples on all of my cap and ball revolvers, so I, I was going to replace it anyway. But it was missing one. And that just shouldn't happen on a brand new pistol. So, Pieta, I'm pretty disappointed in you. I have Uberti's, and they don't give me these kinds of issues. They surely don't. <laughs> I've got soap on my hand because I'm cleaning some parts in here. So, um, anyway, I've got soapy hands. I've got soapy, oily hands. I'm cleaning, and you know, I just w almost want to want to throw this in the trash. I mean, it should not. This should not happen with light use, even with heavy use. This should not be common. So, anyway, thanks for watching my video all the way through. Please like, share, and subscribe if you want. I have other cap and ball content on my channel. Uh, it's a small channel. I'm trying to help it grow. Have a great day, guys.